yourself at home. You know, I never asked this before, but I'm going to ask it now. What's a beautiful girl like you doing working the streets? <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. I like my work. Hmm. That's a good answer. The kind of answer I like to hear. Come on, sweetheart. I haven't got all night. I know. Turn off the light. Sure. So she said, come on, I want you to meet my mother. I said, I don't want to meet your mother. <laughs> yeah. Daryl. What? Come here. What? Check this out. What is it? Hey, Chief. Got another day player for you. You know, ever since you started acting classes, I can't understand a word you say. Day player, here today, gone tomorrow. Now, take Milty here. These are his valuable possessions. Milty fools around with a hooker on Hollywood Boulevard and winds up minus in the blood department. What do you mean, minus? What I mean is whoever killed him drained him of all his blood. Aren't you going to ask me why? You know something, Larry? I don't care to know. Well, the answer is they don't know why. Why or how? Fascinating. You do the honors, will you, Daryl? Yeah, sure, David. Listen, don't you want to see the wound on his neck? I told 
jewelry, we left it spotless. And she said, that doesn't matter. I don't get my cleaning deposit back because I've been there over a year. Can you believe that? She can't do that. That's what I told her. I also told her that you would take her to court and sue her for everything she's got. She doesn't know you're not a lawyer yet. In fact, I said that one of your specialties was tenant's rights. <laughs> I love you. Do you really? Uh, yeah, I do. Look, honey, I've got someone here, so I'll talk to you later, all right? Yeah, bye. May I help you? Yes. I'm here at the request of the King family. I wonder if I might have a few moments alone with the deceased. A king? King? Yeah. That's Milton King. Yes. Yeah. Should just be a second. I'll call. Would Daryl or Larry please come to the first call desk? Should only be a minute. Thank you. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Are you in a hurry? Yes, I am. Well, in that case, uh, I'll take you in. Thank you. A little chilly. Yes. Uh, he's in D21, Father. Uh, I don't usually come in here. I have a weak stomach, I guess. So why don't I leave you alone, and when you're done, I'll be right outside. Fine, thank you. You got the sugar? Yep. You're an incredible human being. Thank you. Where have you guys been? A meal break. We got a union. You two are the worst. King's priest came by to see the corpse, and I ended up taking him in there myself. I don't know who you took in there, Chief, but there's some guy at reception who wants to see Milton King, and he's a rabbi. Rabbi? Maybe he was his tailor. <laughs> Father? tonight but you know i heard tomorrow it's going to be in the low 90s with unhealthful air for sensitive persons <laughs> what do you suppose that means people with lungs <laughs> yeah we're parked over here is it starting already what we move in together and quit kissing <laughs> do you realize what tonight is let me guess my Mars is transecting Jupiter, and so I should be cautious in matters of financial investment. No. Tonight's the first night we go home together. How could I forget? Cheryl! I picked up your paycheck. Oh, thank you. Amy, haven't met David. No, but I've heard so much about you. <laughs> All good, I hope. Well... What have you been telling her? <laughs> have a nice evening. Come on. <laughs> Anyway, so this priest shows up and he wants to see the corpse. So I let him in. I figure maybe the guy needs last rites or Hail Marys. What do I know? That's what you get for being such a devout agnostic. <laughs> so, what happened? Well, what happens is I find out the guy's not Catholic. He's Jewish. The priest? No, no, King. Milton King. His rabbi's waiting outside. So I go looking for the priest, and he's gone. 
That's it? What do you mean, that's it? Doesn't that seem kind of bizarre? Oh, wait. I want to thank Max for his help. Max, you home? Maybe he thinks we have another refrigerator. Hey, Max, we're all moved in. Don't worry. I'm sorry, but I can't come to the door right now. But if you'd leave your name, that's the sound of the town, B. Oh, wait. Uh, I want to use mine. It's brand new. Fits. It works. Mm -hmm. Would you like some wine? I'd love some. Cheryl? Where are the wine glasses? In the cabinet to the right of the sink. Who put him there? I did. While well, you were at law school this morning. Oh. Where's the corkscrew? What did you do, rearrange the whole apartment? Everything was backwards. Oh, I see. I've been living here for two years backwards, is that it? In a manner of speaking. <laughs> scared at all about us of course i'm not scared no i'm serious for someone who's never been married never lived with anyone you're taking this awfully well well i'm not entirely without experience i had a roommate in college besides i love you This stuff put away today. Oh, and can you pick up some Molly screws on your way home? Some what? Molly screws to hang the pictures. The man was brutally murdered in a motel on Hollywood Boulevard. Milton King, a well-known entertainment lawyer and fundraiser for local charities, was found Isn't dead. Isn't that the in his guy? Police Milton refused King? to release any details except that the corpse had been mutilated. Investigators are now seeking an attractive, dark-haired young woman believed to be a prostitute for questioning. A fire in a Burbank convalescent hospital last night forced the evacuation of... Maybe you should tell someone about what happened last night. About the priest? Yeah, maybe so. Uh, look, uh, I gotta go. Oh, by the way, about last night was wonderful. And you're right about me being a little scared sometimes, but I'm not anymore. I've never felt more right about anything in my life. And I won't forget the Molly screws. Bye. And a revised no salt diet for Holloway in 323. Any questions? No? Oh, and one more thing. I want to make sure that anyone going to the blood bank Double checks the wrecks and make sure you get the lab technician's signature. I don't want any more shortages coming back on us. Shortages? Someone apparently walked off with two pints of blood last night. A B positive to make it worse. Who would do a thing like that? 
Maybe it was a mistake. They don't make mistakes, really. I mean, who would do something like that? D don't tell me. I don't want to know. David Balsiger? Yes. I'm Jerry Van Ness. I'd like to talk to you about that priest who came in last night. They're sending somebody down to cover the desk, so if it's all right with you, we can leave now. Leave? Well, I don't really know what I can tell you. Well, it won't take long. Think we'll be back by 12 o'clock? I don't know why. Well, if we won't, I've got to drop my car off for my girlfriend. She works at Memorial Hospital. Well, I'll follow you over. Excuse me, uh, my girlfriend works here. Her name's Cheryl. Oh, I'm sorry. Tonight's my first night. I don't know everybody yet. Oh, thanks. Oh, do you mean Cheryl Gillen? Yeah, that's right. Would you give her a message for me? Sure. Would you tell her that David, I'm David, would you tell her that something came up and I'll explain it to her later, but I left the car for her and I'll meet her back at the apartment. Okay. Thanks. Uh... Oh, Mona. Thanks, Mona. So, where do you go to law school? How'd you know I go to law school? When I came in, you were reading a book on constitutional law. And I thought I had it worked out, so if anyone came in, they'd think I was doing departmental work. That's probably why I noticed that and the fact that I'm in law school myself. Yeah? Yeah. SC. First year, first semester. The only thing that keeps me going is it would hurt more if I quit. Uh, first year's murder. That's a figure of speech. job, you go to law school, how do you find time for a girlfriend? Well, she just moved in with me, which makes it a lot easier so far. I envy you. I'll let you know how it goes. No, he's not here. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not being much help. Don't worry about it. I'm not an ambitious man. But since you're here, I'd like you to take a look at a couple people. Oh, you mean a lineup? Cheryl's not going to believe this. He was younger and kind of innocent looking, not like these guys. And these guys look like criminals. Two of them are cops. <sighs> Should have known. <laughs> Every cop's a criminal and all the sinners saints. Oliver Wendell Holmes. OK, Tom, thanks. No, I believe it was Mick Jagger. <laughs> Every cop's a criminal and all the sinners saints. As heads as tails, just call me Lucifer, or I'll lay your soul to waste. Very good. Come on. Thanks, Pat. Mm -hmm. They figured out what happened to those two pints of blood? Nope, not yet. What do you think happened? I haven't any idea. It's weird, too, because we double-checked all the wrecks, the inventory, everything. It is odd. Mm. Hey, Cheryl? I hear you got a new roommate. Word gets around, doesn't it? You know, I heard something strange about Milton King. I heard he lost all his blood. He didn't lose it. It was taken from him. Taken? How? We're not sure. Well, didn't the autopsy report say what caused those wounds in his neck? Teeth. But that's not for publication. Teeth? 
What do you mean, teeth? Well, we think we may have a vampire in town. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was a joke, David. <laughs> oh, fuck. But that's why we're keeping this thing closed. You'd be surprised how many people would believe that. <laughs> well, thanks for the ride, Jerry. But do me a favor, will you? When you find the guy, let me know what happened. Huh? You got me curious. All right. But it's not a guy. It's a woman. A woman? You don't believe it was a hooker on Hollywood Boulevard, do you? Maybe. David, this is my first homicide, you know what I mean? I mean, for me, it's like the crime of the century, so if you hear about anything else, if anything else happens, I'd appreciate a call, okay? All right, go get your girlfriend. I got to get out of here. <laughs> you bet. See you later. Did you see a priest? What? Just now. No, why? Where the hell is he? He's got to be here somewhere. David, what are you talking about? The priest, the guy I told you about, he's here. He's somewhere in the hospital. Come on. Wait, wait. wait. It's the only place we haven't looked. What was that? That's all you can remember? Yes, that's all. All right, I'd like you to make a statement, please. Jerry? I'm busy. I just forgot I've had them. I love porcupine balls.
Are you all right? I can't believe I'm doing this. What? Shopping, planning menus. Last week, I was at her birthday party. I drank too much wine. I know. I'm okay. You know, I can't believe how Van Ness could be so interested in that priest one minute. And then when I tell him I saw the guy in the hospital five minutes before what happened to Marge. David, he told me all this last night. I know, but he said he didn't have time to talk to me. He was too busy with a lab technician who apparently saw nothing. And then that cop says, we'll call you if we need you. David. You know, I still think you should take a leave of absence. I can't do that. I don't see why not. Other nurses take a leave of absence every now and then. Why can't you? This is different. You take a leave of absence if you're having a baby or a nervous breakdown, not because of something that happened at the hospital. I forgot coffee. Hey, look, over there, a hooker. Can we go now? Another one? Yeah, just like Milton King. There was the hooker, the motel on Hollywood Boulevard, everything. What about the blood? What blood? I told you, it's just like Milton. Whoever killed him drained him of all his blood. Corpse the other night, King, and now this new corpse, McDowell. McDougal. Uh, McDougal. Well, if they both died from identical wounds, doesn't that indicate that they were killed by the same person? Not necessarily. You've heard of copycat killings, haven't you? By the way, have you ever tasted the pie here before? The pie? No. Don't. What do you suppose caused those wounds? Teeth. Yeah, but what kind of teeth? Human teeth? Animal teeth? Belsiger, do you have to lean over my food like that? Look, I can't answer that question. Not in a medical sense. Besides, I've already told you more than I should have in the first place because the police said to put a lid on releasing any information. Stress the word any, okay? Okay. You know, there was a case in San Francisco not too long ago where this guy thought he was a vampire. So he took these pigeons and he cut off their heads and drank their blood. And What's the matter? I'm trying to eat. I have 45 minutes for dinner. I have bad pie. I'm a little short on patience tonight, and I don't want to discuss this any further, OK? Just one more question. Would you say those guys were killed by someone who might possibly think he or she was a vampire? Belsiger. I'm not leaning over your food. How the hell am I supposed to know what anybody thinks they are? OK. Sorry I asked. <laughs>
Well, the mysterious hooker struck again. Same M.O. Motel in Hollywood. Same type of wound. David, couldn't we talk about something else besides hookers and vampires? Who said anything about vampires? That's what you were reading tonight, wasn't it? A book about vampires? Well, what's wrong with that? I mean, what's wrong with reading a book about vampires? Hey, you want to hear something really bizarre? I don't think so. Now, listen to this. Both attacks were in the same place, the identical place. Both victims were male. And, well, I was thumbing through that vampire book, which, incidentally, was a gift. And David, I really don't want to have this discussion, OK? OK, fine. No problem. You know, I really don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, nobody wants to talk about it. Van S. doesn't want to talk about the priest. Dr. Herrera doesn't want to talk at all. Daryl and Larry make jokes, and you get uptight if I even mention it. Maybe I overreacted. If I did, I'm sorry. It's just that, I don't know, it's a very difficult time for us. I don't want anything to... I don't want it to be like this. I hate it when it's like this. Me too. Look, I'm sorry if I'm so hung up about... Can we start over? I hate to ruin a romantic goodbye, but... Uh, since it's your night off, could you hang the prince? <laughs> sure. See, I ruined it. No, you didn't. Have a good night. Hi, Max. Uh, is this 555-3463? Oh, sorry. The League's 6,700 rank-and-file members overwhelmingly approved the proposal during ratification meetings last week. Later on, we'll have a report from Dodger Stadium, and then Chuck will give us the lowdown on this unseasonable weather we're having. In the meantime, in local news, police today reported no suspects in last night's motel murder on Hollywood Boulevard, the second in as many nights. The latest victim, Bernard McDougall, an unemployed film editor, was found after witnesses reported hearing a struggle and strange animal-like noises coming from the room. We'll have updates on that story as they develop. In Burbank today...
Can I get you anything? No, I'm fine, thank you. We'll be back later, Cheryl. Excuse me, could you tell me where Cheryl is? Cheryl Gillen? I think she went to dinner. I thought her break was 7.45. Oh, maybe she's in with Marge Bookman. What room is that? 3.43. Thank you. I said, did you fight back? I told you, I was fighting for my life. What kind of question is that? Did I fight back? What makes you so sure she killed Marge Bookman? Well, someone pulled the oxygen line off. If she didn't, who did? Me? I'm asking the questions, David, if that's all right with you. So, you think this powerful, mysterious woman came into Marge Bookman's room? with the intent of killing her because she was afraid Marge Bookman could identify her. I can't think of any other explanation, can you? I can't think of an explanation for a lot of things. For instance, I can't explain how a woman who you roughly describe as weighing only 115 pounds could overpower a man, any man. You saw the way those bars were torn away from the window the other night? The other night, forget the other night. She crashed through the window tonight. She fell, what, three stories? And nobody was found down there. No blood, no nothing. How do you explain that? All right. I'm not at all sure it was a woman in the lab the other night. Are you? Yes, because of tonight. Oh, why not a small, wiry man dressed like a woman? <sighs> because I had my hands on her face. Because I know what a woman's skin feels like. A woman, huh? But you say even if you saw her again, you don't think you could identify her. I told you, my hands were covering her face. I thought I was dying. Can I go now? In a minute. You know, I don't know how the hell I'm going to explain you to my commanding officer. Because he's not going to know how to explain you to the media. An eyewitness, and all we can get from you is a Halloween mask description. And despite the physical evidence, despite the assailant's almost superhuman strength, my eyewitness insists it was a woman. No way, David. Look, you asked me and I told you. You say I don't like your questions? The truth is you don't like my answers. So go ahead. Do whatever you want. Put out a description for a... Short, wiry, transvestite. I don't care. I just want to get out of here. All right. By the way, I'm not releasing... Yes, give me an outside line, please. I'm not releasing your name. I'd appreciate it if you keep your theories to yourself. Sure. David? Are you ready for this? He doesn't even believe me. Well, I'm sure he... What? Believes it in principle. What principle? It happened to me. Either you believe it or you don't. Right now, I just want to get out of here. Wait. 
Wouldn't you rather wait until I get off? That way you wouldn't have to drive. I'll pick you up later. David? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Why does everybody keep asking me that? I'm sorry. It's just that Marge is dead, and I thought that... Well, maybe... That's all. Look, Mommy, I don't even know you. Yeah, sure you do. Remember, you came in dressed as a priest. No. Come on, look. I'm, I'll take you to the coffee shop. I just want to ask you something. All right, you remember you came into the corner, so... My name is David. What's yours? Paul. The first victim, King. He was Jewish. I didn't even think about it when you came in dressed as a priest. And then the next night, seeing you in the hospital, and then a few minutes later, the nurse that was attacked in the lab. I knew it wasn't a coincidence. She was murdered tonight. These crackers are stale. Are you looking for someone? Who? I don't know. A girl? A woman who disguises herself as a prostitute? Why would someone do that? Why would someone disguise himself as a priest? You know, don't you? About you? About her. You don't know anything about me but you know about her don't you say it coffee huh thanks
say it or get out of here and stop wasting my time. Okay. Is she like a vampire? Like a vampire? My friend, there is nothing in this world like a vampire. But you know that, don't you? No. It's not true. Nobody believes in vampires, not, not real ones. That's their greatest strength, the fact that no one believes. But you do. And you'll never be free again, you know. Free? Free of that knowledge. Innocent. You've lost your innocence. You're so much like me when I first found out. Such a revulsion. And yet, such a sense of discovery. The Christopher Columbus of the world of the living dead. Don't be afraid of me. We're brothers. We share a knowledge few people have and fewer understand. Listen, it's been six months since I could really talk to anyone. And now the same thing is happening to you already. And you can't talk to anybody about it because if you do, they'll lock you up and shoot you up with Thorazine. And finally, in the end, you'll be excommunicated. Excommunicated? You really are a priest? This is not important. I was a priest in a small church outside New Orleans, St. Charles Parish. And when I found out about her, when I knew I had to destroy her, I... Oh, no, wait. Destroy her? Kill her. Once you discover a vampire, you have to destroy it. My God, what else is there to do? A vampire has glimpsed hell. She knows what awaits her, and so she'll go on killing. She must, and each new victim will become a vampire. So what choice do you have? No choice, my friend. Listen to this. This is how clever she is, how insidious. Right after she took the first man here, the lawyer, she found out that I had followed her, so she went to the hospital. She went there to steal blood so she could lay low for a while. No new victims, you see. And that would make me think that she had left the city and I would leave looking for her somewhere else. But I'm too smart for her. And she knows it. She knows I'm here. And I know that she is out there right now. What's wrong? You said that once she'd taken her first man here, you said here. Do you mean L.A.? That's where we are, isn't it? No, no, wait, please, listen to me. Where was she before this? I mean, in the last month or so. Tucson, most recently. And before that, Fort Worth. Why? Did she kill in those places? <laughs> I think I can help. Help? Help me? You're an amateur. I don't even know what you're doing here. What are you doing? Looking for Desire? Desire? That's her name, didn't you know that? Do you know how old she is? How long she survived? How many victims she's claimed? Nothing. You know nothing. And you're gonna deal with her. You're gonna destroy her. Tell me, David, are you a righteous man? You offer me help, you're a child. A vampire has no power over a righteous man. You know that, don't you? No. How could you know that? Temporal men should not hunt vampires. Do you know why? Because she'll find a crack in your armor. A hairline split. And that's all she needs to seduce you, to penetrate your soul. And once she does, you're hers forever, my friend, for eternity.
These donuts are stale, too. I hate the coffee shops. Let me help you, Paul. I can. Whether you think so or not, you're right that people don't believe in vampires, but if you talk to them, I know we can convince... Who? Van Ness. His name's Jerry Van Ness. Who is he? He's a cop. He's a detective. Are you crazy? Oh, all right. Are you crazy? The hey, police? Hey, you have hey, a cool. word. I said it's somewhere else. Okay, it's okay. Oh, my heart. No way. I need you, Paul. I found you, and I'm not going to let you go. All I want you to do is talk to him, that's all. All right. You will? All right, I'm going to make a phone call. You wait right here. Metropolitan Police, please. Thank you. Jerry Van Ness, please. Check. Hey, hold on, pal. No, it's getting away. I mean, you've got to pay the check. The check, right? You don't understand. Oh, I understand. You pay the check right now. Talk to you a minute. Have you got something in mind? Or are you just shopping? I have something in mind. OK. Time is money. Only I don't talk money first. If I talk money first and you're a cop, I'm in trouble. I'm not a cop. But I've got 20 bucks. 30 bucks? You're under arrest. Ah! All right, let's go. Ah! Shut up. Put ah! your hands up. Ah! Spread your legs. Ah! Ball sicker, David R. This hooker walked by. At least I thought she was a hooker. David! Well, wait a minute. Will you let me finish? I want you to understand. I was talking to her because I thought she walked the streets. I, I thought she might have seen this creature. You paid her money? Oh, well, I was going to. I mean, a hooker's time is money. I mean, that's the only reason I talked to her in the first place. Talk about entrapment. Anyway, the point is, I'm not out there cruising Hollywood Boulevard. Yes, you are. You want to know the truth? The truth is, I almost wish you were after a hooker. I'd hate it, but at least I could deal with it. I can't deal with this, David, with, with this obsession. Oh. So now it's an obsession. Well, what would you call it? All right, call it anything you like. But what you're forgetting, what you're ignoring, is that you predicted this would happen in the first place. My chart. You remember? When we first started going out, you said my Mars was in opposition of Pluto or something like that. And you said that something drastic might happen. Well, that's the word you used, drastic. Or have you conveniently forgotten that? Oh, I don't understand you anymore. You've never believed in astrology. Now you're trying to use it to justify all this craziness. I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm trying to explain it. Huh. 
It's amazing. It's just like Paul said it would be. They pumped him full of Thorazine because they thought he was crazy. Yeah, I can see it now. Poor David Balsiger. He was such a nice, tidy David, young man. David, stop it! Now, come on, let's get it out, huh? Is that what you think? You think I'm making this all up? The priest, Paul, the vampire, the fact that she's out there, the fact that she is a vampire? David, all I'm saying is that you've changed. You're, you're like a different person. You've lost interest in everything that was important to you. Law school, your quarterfinals, your job, us. You haven't answered me, Cheryl. Do you believe me or not? I don't think this is the time. This is the time. David, will you listen to me for a minute? I... There's a counseling service at the hospital, and I really no think... No way. You won't even try? Try what? To convince some stranger that I'm not crazy when I can't even convince you? You know, I didn't ask for any of this to happen. I didn't ask for any of it. Neither did I. That many explosions has been announced there in a single day. In local news, the motel murderer struck again last night. Police declined to positively tie this murder in with the two previous motel murders, but a spokesman did confirm there are definite similarities. The victim was an out-of-town businessman. His name is being withheld pending notification of kid. In keeping with its previous findings, the civil error not... Uh, homicide, please. I speak to Detective Jerry Van Ness. Hello, Jerry. It's David. David Balsiger. Uh, fine. How about you? Uh, good. Uh, look, Jerry, uh, I got some information for you. Oh, it's incredible stuff, really. Now, you won't believe what's been going on. Well, uh, as soon as I can. Uh, say in about a half an hour. Yeah, okay. Okay, bye. Just when I was calling you. Now, there's a lot more. In incredible stuff, really, but we can get into that later. The main thing is, I can prove that the guy's for real. Can't imagine how. Okay. You tell me. He told me that he'd been hunting her across the country. Now, I asked him where he's been most recently, and they said Tucson, and before that, Fort Worth. Have there been any similar murders there in the last month or so? Yes. Were any details released to the press? You see, Jerry, this is real. Oh, and one other thing. Last night's victim, the out-of-state guy? Well, I know this information wasn't released to the press, but he was married, wasn't he? How did you know that? That's what I'm trying to tell you. You see, nobody really knows anything about vampires, but Paul told me that a vampire can't penetrate the soul of a righteous man. And then I began thinking about the victims. What did they have in common? They were married, all of them, married and cheating on their wives. So in other words, for a female vampire, they're the perfect victims, men whose souls can be easily penetrated because they aren't righteous. You were arrested last night, weren't you? Uh, last night, well, yeah, I was arrested, but it's not like it sounds. Were you booked? 
Well, yeah, I was booked, but... Again... Charged? Yeah, I was... Released on $500 bail? Yeah, I was, but what has that got to do with what I'm telling you? I'm trying to make a point, David. What point? Yeah, I was arrested, but it was a mistake. What's the point? I'm here because of what happened last night. I want to help. You make me feel like a damn suspect. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. I don't want a cup of coffee. Let me buy you a cup of tea. I don't want a cup of tea. Coffee black. David. I like you. Oh, boy. That's why I'm telling you for your sake. No more help. For my sake? What has my sake got to do with this? You got a girl out there posing as a hooker, killing people, and I come in here with information. Information? Hell, I find a guy who's chased her halfway across the country, who was in Tucson and Fort Worth. David! What the hell is it with you? When I met you that night, you impressed me as a guy who had it together, who had a perspective on things. Now you're coming in here wild-eyed with stories about priests and vampires. Well, I've had it. I don't want to hear it anymore. Do you walk around with a cross now? Do you, do you keep a wooden stake to drive through its heart? How's the search for the short, wiry transvestite coming? David. I'm sorry. Me too. I think you should seriously consider professional help. I'm leaving. Leaving? <laughs> leaving where? I called a cab. Uh, Amy from the hospital said I could spend a few days with her. You're moving out? For a little while. David, I love you but I just can't stay here like this. All we do is argue, and all I do is cry and worry, and if staying would help, I'd stay, but I don't think it would. I think this is something you have to work out on your own. Her number's in the book by the phone. But please, David, don't call unless it's over. Oh, that's probably the cab. I just moved in. Here, I can carry those. Oh, uh, no, that's all right. I got it. Uh, Amy said she could drive me to work and back, so... Try and take care of yourself, David. You look tired. Don't forget to water the plants.
Hello, this is David Balsiger. I won't be able to come in tonight. No, I'm very sick. Yes, it's coroner's aid, that's right. Thank you. David Balsiger, you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to pick up girls on Hollywood Boulevard. Do you remember me? Mona from the hospital. Oh, yeah. I need to talk to someone. May I get in? Um, yeah, sure. David? Yeah? Can I buy you a drink? Buy me a drink? I want to talk to you. Oh, sure. Do you do this often? What? Pick up girls. <laughs> now, this is a first. <laughs> Good, we're even. What about Cheryl? I thought you were in love. We are. We just had an argument. I'll bet she's home waiting for you right now. She moved out. I'm sorry. David, where are we going? I don't know. Must be a bar around here somewhere. I've got an idea. My place isn't far. Why don't we go there? Is reserved. Is that okay? You're awfully sweet. Do you know that? <laughs> Lived here long? Oh, about a month or two.
Do you like it? It's, it's like a dream. <laughs> it is a dream. It comes alive at night. White wine? Sure. My father left this to me, otherwise I'd be living in a duplex on Melrose. Can I ask you something? Anything. What were you doing out there tonight? You may not like it. Do you understand eccentricities, David? Eccentricities? Lately I've come to, yeah. Well, good. Then maybe you'll understand mine. Sometimes I drink martinis, but not because I particularly like gin. I like Spanish olives. Things are not always what they appear. Okay. Thank you. I have too much time and too much money. That's why I do volunteer work at the hospital. Well, one of the reasons. When I'm not involved with a man, my fantasies have nowhere to go, if you know what I mean. So every once in a while, I put on something tight and sexy and take a walk. And those men looking for girls drive by and they go crazy. <laughs> Am I being immodest? No. <laughs> and that's all. That's all? It is for me. I said I was eccentric, David, not crazy. <laughs> I tell them to drive around the block. I'm worried about cops and meet me on the corner. They drive around the block and I'm gone. Do you hate me? No. That's why I was down there. I won't ask why you were. I don't care. This is a special night, Dave. Don't be afraid. Be free with me. I can be everything you ever wanted. No, David. Not yet. I want tonight to last forever. yourself to more wine.
wait a minute. Sit down, David. Oh, look, do you think I could use your... Uh... Upstairs, first door on the right. Uh, thanks. Righteous man. I am a righteous man. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I am a righteous man. What a pity. Too bad our little fantasy had to end so soon. I'm a righteous man. I am a I righteous man. I it. I am a righteous man. No, David. You're like all the others. You wear your righteousness like a coat, so when it gets too warm, you can slip into something more comfortable.
Hey, Jerry. Yeah, what have you got? You won't believe it. Come on up here a second. I want to show you something. Turn it to the left. What? Turn it to the left. David, I've got to get a statement from you. If you want to ride down with me, we can talk on the way. Does this mean I'm under arrest? At this point, you're a witness. I keep trying to think of something to say. Small talk. I can't think of a thing. Did you kill him? Both of them? Why? They were vampires. Is that what you're going to tell the jury? Yes. David, come on. We've had this conversation before. I'm not going to argue with you, Jerry. They were vampires. They killed them because if I didn't, they would have killed me. That's self-defense. You know that. I'll go to court. I don't mind. I got nothing to hide. I'm not guilty of anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I didn't! Okay! And after she'd stabbed the man called Paul, she attacked me, and I tried to run anywhere I could, and I crashed into the window, and I ran outside onto the balcony, but she followed me. She said she was going to kill me, too. She grabbed me, and we struggled. She lost her balance and fell to her death. Sign it. If I sign that, I'm signing a lie. You're signing the facts. The physical evidence will corroborate this statement. This statement will allow you to leave here in five minutes and never come back. You said you were innocent, didn't you? Yes. All right. This statement will allow you to live like an innocent man. What if I don't sign it? I arrest you on two counts of murder. You're booked, you go to jail, you're arraigned, you're denied bail, you sit in county jail with junkies and morals offenders waiting for trial. If you don't have $50,000 for a good lawyer, you're represented by a public defender about your own age who will treat your case with great enthusiasm and virtually no trial experience. And after about a month or so of trial, even if you're found not guilty by virtue of self-defense, your life will no longer be your own. Forget law school. If you've got any class, forget Cheryl. You wouldn't want her to have to suffer through this. I think she suffered enough as it is. The point is, David, even if you win, you lose. You go to the corner store and the clerk will stare at you because your, your face is on the cover of every national magazine. You know what she'll ask you? She'll ask, are there really vampires? Of course, no matter what you say, she won't believe you. 
I think you said it yourself right here in this office a couple days ago. It's their greatest strength. The fact that no one believes. Come on. Why are you doing this? Because I don't think you're a murderer, David. But I cannot live in a world populated by vampires. A case like this is a freak show. Nobody wins, nobody wants it. Not the department, not me. Especially me. I have a life to lead, too. Come on, come on, my arm's getting tired. Initial change there. By the way, I talked to Cheryl. What'd you tell her? I told her we had to talk to you. You had some papers to sign. I think she's on her way over. David, good luck to you. You know, in a week's time, you'll just be another witness I questioned on a case. I won't even remember your name. David. Nothing. 